Okay, limited licensing license drawings. 20, 20, 20, item 26. Tony says I'm a man who needs no introduction, so. <laughs> well, you're right there. <laughs> uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chair, <coughs> Commission Secretary. Um, Chris is going to get a fire, or PowerPoint fired up for me here quick. Um, just wanted to visit with you guys uh, a little bit about um, our preference drawing for deer, antelope, uh, paddlefish, turkey, those kinds of things. It's going to be everything except for uh, elk, bighorn sheep, mountain goat. Um, the things that we're going to talk about today would not affect those drawings. Um, uh, we've got a couple, we've got an idea here that we think uh, might be able to um, help redistribute some licenses a little bit, maybe sh maybe find a little more fairness in our, in our drawing. Um, but anyway, we want to run this idea past you guys and, and see if uh, you're seeing the same things that we are, that you think you just concur that this is a good idea or if you see some issues with it. Um, this is not something that takes uh, action or uh, anything like that. This is just uh, an administrative um, way that we, we do, our, do our drawings. So, uh, I'll jump into it. Um, just going to run through a preference real quick. Um, a lot of you guys are familiar with this. I've given this spiel to you a couple of times, uh, but I, I do want to go back uh, just a little bit here and, and give you a little bit of background. When we do, I'm going to talk about deer, uh, but this applies to, like I said, all those other um, turkey, antelope kind of the seasons. But um, in those seasons where we have a, a landowner uh, component, 50% um, of all the licenses that are available in a unit are uh, allocated to the landowner pool. Um, they kind of get the first chance at those that 50%. Um, uh, we do a series of drawings. The th this is the first step in that series. Um, landowners are issued up to 50%. Um, landowners who are unsuccessful in previous years, uh, they, they have a preference point just like uh, those of us in the general public. Um, the license system does its general drawing, uh, issues those licenses out, and the, uh, if there's licenses left over, those fall down to the next preference pool, um, just like they do in other seasons, and then they're issued to our, our general public. Um, the first step in the kind of the general drawing is this preference pool, and right now we've got this preference pool set at if you've got one year of preference or more, you're kind of all in the same group. Um, and, and again, the other 50% of those licenses is allocated into this pool uh, along with anything that's left from the landowner pool. Um, we spin that down through there. We issue all of these licenses. Um, if we uh, have enough licenses, uh, everybody's going to be successful. If we run short, we're going to get some people that, uh, even though they have preference, are going to still be uh, unsuccessful in the, in the drawing. Um, if we do have uh, um, regular, if we have some licenses left over, they fall to this next drawing. And this is kind of the, it's the second to the last uh, step in this process, but it's the last one we're going to talk about today. And that's just for the rest of us that don't have any preference. If we had a deer license last year, we used our preference, or it's the first year that we're applying for a regular season, um, we're going to go into this drawing with no preference. Um, our name is basically going to be in the drawing one time, and we're going to kind of fight over whatever's left over. Um, in some units, uh, that's going to be uh, uh, more than enough licenses to take care of everybody because there isn't high demand for maybe a whitetail tag in some western counties or um, something like that. Maybe it's some antlerless tags somewhere along the line. Um, but anyway, that's, that's where we're going to find those folks that um, don't have any preferences in this pool and everybody's in there one time and uh, we spin down through the system and, and issue those licenses. The one thing I can tell you about this preference pool is, you know, we hear, hear uh, different stories every year after we do the drawings that, you know, I haven't had a license for three years and, and this guy's getting one every year. Um, our system doesn't allow for that. Um, most of the time when we go back and we investigate those things, someone didn't have their so story exactly straight. Um, there, if you apply for the same season, if uh, uh, Commissioner Cooper and I apply for the same unit and he's got two years of preference and I've got zero, there's absolutely no way that I am going to draw a license before John does. It's just the, the way our system is set up. So um, those kinds of things uh, don't happen without some sort of computer glitch. I have not seen that particular instance happen in the several years that I've been around. So uh, anyway, we do have a system in place right now that prevents that. So when we're talking about licenses and, and how does our system work, um, I put up here when supply meets demand, and that's probably 
an erroneous title. Uh, it's probably, as you'll see here, it's, it's probably closer to when supply almost meets demand in this particular instance. But I picked Minor County as an example where they've got 400 any deer licenses. And you can see this is kind of the steps through the, the process. We've got 400 licenses available. Um, where's my pointer at? Which one is this hull? There it is. Landowner uh, licenses, we, we take half of those, about 200 of them. Um, we, we allocate those out to the landowners. In this case, we had 175 landowners that applied. Um, we issued all those, and we had 25 left over. So those 25 go back down here. They join the, the, uh, the other 50%. So we've got 225 licenses total that we can issue to people with preference. We only had 174 applications. So in Minor County, we took care of everybody that had uh, a preference point. Every, if you had at least one year preference point, you got a deer license last year in Minor County. And in fact, we even had 51 licenses remaining after doing that portion of the drawing. So those 51 dropped down and, and uh, you know, we, we dropped those down to the zero, pre zero preference pool and, and uh, some of those folks that may have even had a license last year or this is their first year applying in this particular unit, um, out of those 310 people that kind of fit that mold, 51 of them were able to draw. So uh, again, I go back and I say this, this almost meets demand. It, it, I should have probably worded that just a little bit differently. But um, this is kind of, the, this is the breakdown of, of what we had in Minor County for the people that had preference. Um, the, the largest group we had, we had th uh, three years of preference for three people. Obviously, they were all successful. We had 11 people with two years of preference. They were successful. And, and 170 people that had one year, again, all successful. These down here are going to be landowners, the 217. Uh, it, we had 40 people, 40 landowners that had actually a preference point, and they would have fallen up into this category. So um, don't get too concerned with that number. But just know in, in Minor County that if you had a preference point, you got a deer license last year. So we kind of met the demand there. Look at another example where demand exceeds the supply, and that's Yankton County. Um, Yankton County last year, we only had 100 licenses available. So when you start doing the splitting up of licenses, you see that we've only, we've only got 50 licenses for the landowners. We've only got 50 licenses that go into that preference group, and we've got way more demand for that. We've got 123 landowners. We've got 248 folks that at least have a year of preference. And then we've also got 423 that are standing in line with no preference. This is the first year that they applied. So we don't meet demand in this, this particular uh, county. And you can see that some of these preference totals are, are getting fairly substantial. Um, we have one individual who had seven years of preference. Um, he didn't draw. We had an individual with six years. He did, uh, he or she did uh, draw a license. But as you keep working down here, you start to see that you know, four years of preference, about a third of those folks actually drew. Um, three years of preference, uh, even less of a percentage, down to two. And, uh, and then down to one, we actually had 131 people that applied with one year of preference and had 30 of those individuals draw. So um, this is, uh, you know, it's, it's no matter what we do with 100 licenses, we're not going to be able to satisfy this demand. We can reorganize this thing several different ways, and, and we're not going to be able to catch up with that. Um, that being said, Yankton County is a, a county that traditionally has probably had five, six, seven hundred licenses. Um, they just are really in a slump right now. The EHD hit them hard. Um, we're, we're anticipating that to bounce back. But um, anyway, this, this is one of the things that we really looked at. And the reason that we looked at it is because of the 2014 deer hunting license survey that we did. Um, uh, Dr. Longmire did that last year, uh, December, I believe, is when we reported to you guys. If it wasn't December, it was January. But anyway, we had 54% of those people that said they would like to see greater weight placed on applications who have more preference points. Um, you know, we couldn't find a lot of things in that survey that kind of gave us a direction on how we should modify our system to create more equity or to get more licenses distributed. But this was one of the things that, uh, you know, we felt like this is a fairly easy change for us to make and something that we can uh, maybe take a peek at and, and uh, see if we can find something to improve our system a little bit. So how do we add greater weight to, the, to that preference point? If I've got two, how, how does that make it more worthwhile for me to have two than the guy that has one, other than my name just goes in the hat one more time? And that is to add an additional preference group for those with at least two years of preference. Now, this seems pretty simple, um, but uh, you know it's not something we've traditionally done. Um, basically, what this does is instead of just having 
one big group of all preference points, we break that out just a little bit further and we say if you've got two or more years of preference points, then, you, then you're in this group. And if you've got one year of preference point, you're in this group. Um, we think that's going to make a, a difference, and I've got a couple of examples here that I pulled out that I, that I want to show you. Um, this, is, this is Lake County, um, and this is last year's drawing statistics for Lake County. Um, you can see that uh, six years of preference uh, was our top uh, tier there. We had six, five, and four. Six, six and five both drew, or they, they were all successful. We had four individuals there, and they all drew a license over here, or excuse me, over here, successful applications. Mm -hmm. We get down into four, three, and two, though, you start to see that we had successful applications of six, applications of seven. 22 of those folks uh, were successful that had three years of preference, but there was 30 that applied. And then when we got down to two, we had 54 individuals who were successful and 88 that applied. Well, we still had 101 of those folks with one year of preference who would have had a license, not the previous year, but the year before, you know, kind of an every other year schedule. Um, out of the 175 of those folks, <laughs> Uh, over a hundred of them actually drew. So I want to take a look at it and say, well, what happens if we implement this kind of two plus tier um, uh, approach? And what you see is obviously it, it doesn't affect those top two because they're top two groups because they were successful. But all of a sudden we take care of everybody down to this point. If you had two years of preference or more, we take care of all of those individuals, um, 120 or so, a little over 120 of those individuals. The only thing that we would have left is you see that we go from 101 people with one year preference uh, drawing a license, we reduce that number actually to 59. Um, so even though we had one year preference, we're still, you know, we're going to satisfy about a third of those folks. Um, but we're going to make sure that with this process that if you've been sitting out of the, out of the deer hunting season for uh, three, four, five, six years, that we're going to be able to take care of you, at least in this scenario. Um, Another example that, that we looked at was Black Hills Deer. And um, Black Hills Deer, you can see we've got some preference point totals that are, are getting up there, eight, nine, uh, or excuse me, eight, seven, eight years of preference. Um, each one of those individuals drew uh, in the seven and eight year category. But as you move down, you start to see that there's, there's several people here, uh, almost, f what, 340 that had two years of preference that, that weren't successful in drawing a deer license. Well, we had 1,600 individuals who had one year preference that were successful. So we had 1,600 that are kind of on this every other year program. While we've got people that are sitting out there at three, four, and five years of preference that, that didn't draw. Um, so if we look at what this, this idea does, um, actually we're going to be able to satisfy demand um, all the way down to all those people that had at least two years of preference, um, 1,206 of them all the way up. Um, I, I believe it's 400 individuals that would actually be impacted. We're going to be able to get them a license um, without having to wait three, four, five, six, and seven years. Uh, and we're still going to be able to take care of pretty close to half of the number of individuals that had at least one year of preference. So um, we look at this and we say this, this seems like it, it makes some sense to us. But again, uh, we wanted to run it past you guys. Um, when I tried to put together a pros and cons to this, um, uh, the pro, some of the pros are that it will, it'll enhance the chances of drawing for those with two, two or more years of preference. Um, it, it will not allow someone to draw every other year while others have to wait longer. We, we looked at those examples where we've got people sitting out there five, six, and seven years, and we've, then we've also got individuals that are drawing every other year. Um, this would, this would curta curtail that. In most cases, it still allows those with a single preference point to at least have an opportunity. In most units, we've still got licenses that fall down to that zero plus preference group. Not everyone, but, some, but, but a lot of them. Um, so you're still gonna have a chance to draw in a lot of cases. Um, and, and the other part of this is that it's gonna be even more effective as our deer herd increases. We know right now we've been battling with uh, trying to increase our deer numbers. And as we have more licenses available, this kind of a system will allow even more of those individuals um, to, to, so that we can make sure that even more of those individuals are taken care of on a regular basis and we don't start to see those preference group, those preference uh, uh, people with six, seven, and eight years out there uh, anymore. So one of the, some of the cons, I guess, or the disadvantages is that this is not going to impact some of our high demand seasons. 
Um, muzzle loader, we've got you know 5,000 applications, 6,000 applications for 1,000 licenses. Um, even though we would implement this across the board, it's not going to take care of it like we saw in the Black Hills or in a, in a Lake County. Um, Custer State Park Deer, where we've got you know a couple thousand people applying for 10 licenses, you know we're, we're just not going to be able to fix that. Um, but uh, the next, I guess the next thing is that some units will require a two-year wait. And some of those high-demand units, um, th if we implement this system, it is, is basically going to demand that when you get a license, you are going to sit out at least two years before you have a chance to draw. Um, that's not unprecedented. We've, we, I wasn't with the department, but I think back in the 60s and 70s or, or maybe even early 80s, there was a, if you drew a license, you had to sit out for three years or so, you know, something along those lines. So this has been done before. Um, I, and I guess that's about what I've got. And, and again, uh, I, I want to make sure that you understand this does not affect any of those elk seasons, um, bighorn sheep, uh, any of that kind of stuff. Those, those have got a separate process in place. This is strictly for those deer, antelope, turkey, paddlefish, all those kinds of seasons. So anyway, that's, uh, again, I'm just looking to make sure that we didn't miss something. Uh, if you guys uh, are, are comfortable with this, this is something that we could put in place administratively and we're ready to do it uh, as soon as we get the thumbs up so just uh, kind of looking questions for Scott issues those are hard solutions to get to because they still don't reach everybody's desire and no matter what you do so you have to settle for less than ideal you know um, I certainly is it one of those situations where we could try it, but if it's yep. not working, then we could back off? I mean, yeah. you know what? Absolutely. The, this change requires us to, you know, push a few buttons. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not reprogramming. It's not any of those kinds of things. If if we get blindsided by this thing and see that, uh, you know, it's not working the way that we wanted it to, um, we can certainly back off of it in a hurry, too. So. Do you want to try to do something like this prior to the... Uh, the uh, the deer, I mean, we, we were trying to do what we possibly could for all deer-related issues, and would you like to go out in front with this first and then go from there with uh, the deer management plan, or would you like to wait for the deer management plan to institute this at the same time? I, I would tell you that from my personal standpoint, this is not going to impact people uh, dramatically. Uh, I don't know that it is going to have major repercussions on our deer management plan. Uh, or even that these kinds of things would be involved in the deer management plan. I don't know that for certain. Um, I, I think we're ready to move forward with this for this uh, this year's deer drawings, as long as you know someone doesn't see something that that's glaring uh, glaringly wrong with this. We we vetted it with uh, uh, our our biology staff, our CRD group, um, have discussions with Secretary Hepler and Director Life. Um, I, I think we're ready to move forward if if you guys uh, don't have major concerns with it. And, and we'll monitor it. We'll make sure that uh, it's, it's working the way that we envision it working. And if it's not, we'll certainly uh, back off of it. Come back and let us know then sure. from that point. Yeah. Anybody have any heartburn with letting them try this? It sounds like a good system. Yeah. Yeah, it's worth a try. Go ahead, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question, and I think we've talked about it briefly. Has there been a lot of... Uh, request or something to change the 50 percent available to landowners does that seem to be satisfactory is there and there is a certain portion for non-residents in some of these is there not there there is and you know that was addressed in that survey that we did and i would i don't remember the number specifically but we didn't get a mandate one way or the other that said you know it's it's way too much or or it's too few i i mean i think we kind of fell in that yeah, we're comfortable with it. It's about right uh, kind of an area. I, I don't remember those numbers specifically. I'm sorry. But uh, I, I don't believe that um, we got a lot out of that survey that said you guys should go do this. This was one of those things that we felt like we got enough support out of the, out of the information we received back from the public to, to try to make a change. So. Okay. All right. Mr. Secretary, do you want a motion on this, or will you just acknowledge the fact that uh, this administrative it would be administrative from the standpoint, and if we don't see any problems, I guess we could just get by with um, having a report at some points down the future, given where, where you guys are at? I don't think we require a motion, Mr. Chairman. I don't know if Deb would want to do that for the minutes or not, but I don't think so. I think it's pretty clear, and we're on your record. So, 
I don't see members of the audience jumping up and shooting us yet, so. <laughs> yet. Yeah, I, I said yet. <clears throat> okay. All okay. right, let's, we'll, we'll uh, let, let's go ahead and work on it, and uh, okay. appreciate it, Scott. Thank you. Good explanation.